There's nothing worse than being at a friend's house and then seeing the water start to rise. <laughs> you guys knew what you were signing up for when you clicked this video. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We are a couple of American digital nomads who have been wandering around the world for a few years and we are currently living in Paris. We're stuck here during lockdown and confinement and we are taking advantage of all this inside time to make a lot of videos about British culture for you guys to enjoy. If British culture is a topic that interests you, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so that you can get notified every time we release a new video. Today we are introducing you to 10 major differences between British and American toilets. Note, we are not talking about public restrooms, but rather the smallest room in the house. We Americans call this room the bathroom, but most Brits call it the loo, lavatory, or toilet. And we've heard that what you call it depends on which class you're in in the UK. If the topic of class interests you, then you'll enjoy seeing our shocked faces in this video right here. The observations in this video are based on our personal experiences laying cable and talking to God on the big porcelain telephone in the UK and USA. <laughs> So please know that we are not speaking for every single bathroom across both of these nations because we have yet to see a man about a dog in every single loo across these nations. Okay, let's go down the shitter and explore the 10 biggest differences between American and British bathrooms. Toilet water. Now you might be thinking, oh, that's a little bit of a strange difference, but it is a difference. The UK has their toilet water a lot lower down, whereas the US has their toilet water higher up. If you look down inside of a US toilet, you will see, you know, a good gallon of water or more <laughs> down in there. It's a pool of liquid waiting to receive your breakfast. Whereas in the UK, it's just a little bit of water down in the very back of the toilet in the hole. We imagine that the UK method is more environmentally friendly as it uses less water, but we found that having the water so far down in the toilet does increase the odds of splashback when your little <clears throat> things fall into it, you do receive Poseidon's kiss. <laughs> Ew, that's terrible. <laughs> because it's this much, you know, it's going it from is, here to it's here. It's like a good, it's like, it's like cliff jumping right there. Yeah. You guys knew what you were signing up for when you clicked this video. <laughs> also, with UK toilets not having a lot of water higher up in the toilet, it does drastically increase your chances of creating skid marks <laughs> down the always basin. always really embarrassing. Yeah, down the bowl. Take the kids for a sled down. Yeah, not dropping them off at the pool. You're dropping them off at the water park. <laughs> yeah. So we did find that in the UK, you make a lot more use of the toilet brush than you do in the States. And in, in the States, because of how high the water is, skid marks are relatively rare. And so people don't really use the toilet brush that much, except for, you know, once a week cleanings or every few yeah. days. That said, I was really impressed with how UK toilets managed to flush, you know, flush it all down with such a small amount of water. Whereas in the US, when we flush, you know, it's, it's, like it's putting a lot, a gallon, two gallons of water yeah, down that thing. it does seem really wasteful. Mm -hmm. Dual flush toilets. Fairly common in the UK. Have never seen these in America. I have. Oh, you have? Yeah, huh? but it doesn't have two flushes. It just has... Some... It has the where you can do... Yeah, up or down. Mm -hmm. I think a couple years back, there was a big move to do that in the US. Okay. This could be one of those things where they started putting them in after we left the States. So we yeah. haven't really seen that transition in dual flush. Ah, uh, that too, because I've been back there a lot more than you have. Yeah. Taps or faucets. A couple of differences here. The first one, obviously, is that in the UK, you guys call them taps, whereas in the US, we tend to call them faucets or spigots. Although we do call it tap water still, though. Yeah, we do call it tap water if it comes from the tap, but if we're talking about the specific thing, we call it a faucet. Yeah, we do. We always call it a faucet. The next big difference when it comes of taps is that in the US it is very very rare to see separate taps you'll only see them in very old buildings and even then I have honestly never seen them in the US and I've been in a lot of different bathrooms meanwhile in the UK while we were there we saw separate taps everywhere we saw them in new houses in old houses we saw them in churches and in museums and train stations mm -hmm. we just couldn't get away from the separate taps and oh my gosh they drove us crazy <laughs> yeah they did actually like not meaning offense at all but it was very 
difficult to get the perfect temperature water. Now we do know that the reason for this is because due to the old plumbing in a lot of UK houses and buildings, it's not actually safe to have the cold and hot tap coming in through the same faucet because it would risk contamination from the hot water mm -hmm. tank, which might, you know, might be open, might be old, might not be well filtered. And so for drinking water safety, they have to have the two separate. Whereas in the States, we don't really have that many old buildings, at least not with a type of plumbing that they do in a lot of old buildings in the UK. Mm -hmm. And so it is generally safe to have them both coming in through the same faucet. So yes, there is a reason to have separate taps in the UK. We do get that. Is it annoying? It's still annoying. <laughs> And this brings us to sinks. In the UK, these can also be called basins. I think the major difference between sinks in the UK and US is just that we use them differently. In previous videos where we've complained about the separate taps in the UK, and people always tell us, hey, what you're supposed to do is put the plug in the sink, fill it up with hot and cold water till it reaches your desired temperature, and then wash your hands in the water. But, oh, that sounds kind of gross. <laughs> it's better to wash it under running water because yeah. it's washing the germs away instead of bathing your hands in dirty water. And sinks are very dirty. Yeah, sinks are very, yeah. very bacteria ridden. It's, unless you clean your sink you're not, every day. Yeah, it's not like you're bleaching your sink between every time you mm -hmm. use it. We did see a lot of people say that they believe corking it and filling it up with water actually uses less water than running it and washing your hands under it, but I I don't. beg to differ. I, uh, I would disagree with that. I would, yeah. Because what we do in the States is you turn it on, you get your hands wet, turn off, grab soap, 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 20 seconds, turn on, Wash. Yeah. yeah. It's not like you have it running the whole time while you do the scrubbing, or at least you're not supposed to. Yeah. Like you're always told, turn it off, scrub, turn it back on, rinse. And that uses very little water. Outlets. The big difference here is that most of the bathrooms we saw in the UK lacked any sort of electrical outlet. And this makes a lot of sense given how high voltage is in the UK. I mean, anywhere where you have that amount of voltage mm -hmm. and water, you don't want that those two yeah things. that's i don't even know why we have them in american bathrooms to be honest like to mm -hmm. me that seems like a very dangerous hazardous yeah, thing it is a bit of a hazard so this makes complete sense for why the uk doesn't do that in american bathrooms like grace just said you will almost always see an outlet by the sink or somewhere else in the bathroom so that you're able to plug things in one caveat to the uk situation is that we did see little tiny two-pronged electrical sockets in UK bathrooms, which I would assume would be for some kind of low voltage razor or blow dryer, um, something like that. But I never actually verified that, but that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. Am I right? You can let us know. With the issue of outlets in bathrooms, we definitely mm -hmm. think that the UK does this better than the US because having a high voltage outlet in a bathroom is just not safe at all. Mm -hmm. And while it is inconvenient, like if you want to blow dry or curl your hair or something, I mean, you can just do that in your bedroom. Usually you have a mirror in your bedroom too, so. Yeah. Shouldn't be that much of a problem. Plungers. Do you guys call them plungers in the UK? In American bathrooms, behind every great toilet <laughs> is a great plunger. You will never enter an American bathroom that doesn't have a plunger in it. If it's not behind the toilet, it's in a cupboard somewhere. <laughs> but while we were in the UK, we actually never saw a plunger. No, where, where do you guys keep your plungers? Or do your toilets not clog? Actually, this makes it sound like American toilets are constantly clogging, which isn't the case. It's just that our pipes are fairly small. And so if you, you know, if you, Really only kids clog it. Mm -hmm. People don't usually clog it. I've never clogged a toilet. In your life? In my life. What about when you were a kid? I don't remember that. Okay, Eric's mom verify this. I don't <laughs> believe him at all. But you know, even if you're someone who's never clogged a toilet, it's nice to know that you've got back up there standing by if you the trusty. Yeah. You know, if you're taking the extra long poo, you sometimes have a chat with the plunger. Just, hey, plunge, how's it going? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing worse than being at a friend's house and then seeing the water start to rise mm -hmm. when you hit the flush. Yeah. You're like, I thought oh, you said no. you'd never clogged a toilet. Well, mine has always gone down as the water rises and then goes back down. So I've never actually had to use the plunger. Have you never? Never. Well, I mean, I've of course I've unclogged lots of toilets because I have a lot of siblings and so mm -hmm. growing up up, they would always clog it and I'd be in there. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I don't know what you're talking about. Like in our in our family the toilet was constantly like it always was like a weekly use. ritual. Light switches. The difference here is that in US bathrooms you can always find a light switch and it will be an actual switch on the inside of the bathroom or on the outside. Whereas in the UK we found that many bathrooms tend to have a light string, which was very confusing for us the first time we arrived and we spent a good five minutes stumbling around the bathroom trying to find the, the switch and there was no switch. 
And then I was like, oh, what does this do? Is it a trap door? Oh, we've since learned that the reason why British bathrooms have the light strings instead of the light switches is because there is a small chance that you could get an electric shock, mm -hmm. small electrocution with the light switch if your hands are wet when you do the switch. It does seem like a very small, small, small chance given mm -hmm. how safe switches tend to be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, given how high voltage is in the UK, I don't blame you guys for doing strings instead of switches because if there's any chance that someone could die doing that, that's a horrible way to go. Bathtubs. The difference here is that UK baths are raised, so you have to step into them, whereas baths in the USA are usually level with the floor. So I don't know if this makes sense, but like here's your floor, and in the US your bathtub floor is at the same yeah. level. But in the UK, here's your floor, and then here's your the floor of your tub. So you kind of have to step way up and over, or you need a little stool to get into the tub. I'm not sure actually why that is. I'm not sure yeah. either. Does it have to do with keeping children out of the bathtub? Oh, maybe, maybe that. that. We also noticed that baths in the UK tend to be a lot bigger, and we thought this might be due to that we also heard that Brits take a lot more baths than Americans. Because American bathtubs are very small, they're low, there's no way you're fitting two people in there. You're barely fitting yourself in there most of the time. Unless you're, you know, getting a jacuzzi or something like that. But a lot of the UK bathrooms that we saw had large, deep, wide baths with nice sloping ends. Maybe we prefer showers is what it is. Maybe yeah, the US doesn't that. really have a ba bath culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember the last time I had a bath. I can't either. I just years. I love baths though so much so I, I knew I was supposed to be a Brit. When God made me he was supposed to put me in a British womb but I accidentally was born an American. It's like oh wrong way. Shoot. No get her back. <laughs> this will be a very interesting American. That was God. That's what God said when he sent you oh. down the wrong showers. In the UK, many showers are electric, and this is something that actually took us a while to figure out how to use. It was very odd. Yeah, which, so, does, do I turn it this way or that way? Or? It was like programming, <laughs> programming a spaceship. No, driving a spaceship. While I'm sure there are electric showers in the US, we haven't seen them yet, and it seemed that every bathroom we went into in the UK had electric showers. Now, I know nothing about electric showers and how they work, but I assume the reason and motivation for using them in the UK is that they conserve energy, so they cost less to run and are probably friendlier on the environment as well. In the States, the way most people heat their hot water is in a, just a traditional hot, hot water, either gas or electric heater, big, huge vat of a thing. So if you're gonna take a hot shower, you just turn it on hot and bam, instant hot water. Whereas with the electric showers in the UK, you do need to wait a moment to allow the electric heater to work its magic. Bidets, bidets. 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 Well, they, they say They bidet. say bidet. We say bidet. 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 But it's French, right? So how, did the, how would you read it in French? They would say bidet, probably. Because uh, I makes an E sound. Right. All right, whatever this is called, you know, the butt washy thing. <laughs> the butt washy thing. <laughs> the obvious difference here is that we have been into thousands and thousands of American bathrooms and never once have either of us ever seen a bidet or bidet. Whereas in the UK, we saw quite a few bidets. Yeah, these butt washy things are popular in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> and as we've said in other videos, we are very intimidated by them because the European style bidet, you know, it's it, it's this separate thing mm -hmm. that is, you know, you got the toilet and then you've got the bidet. So you've got to, you know, you do your business, then you stand up and then you waddle over here <laughs> and then you position yourself. <laughs> And you gotta aim it right, otherwise you might make a mess. We do agree that bidets are a great idea and are a great way to get yourself clean and probably better for the environment because you're cutting down less trees for toilet paper, but the Japanese have figured out bidets. A little bit better. Yeah. Sorry. it's all It's all in one thing. You got the toilet, you got the bidet smushed together like a beautiful hamburger. You've got the button controls right there. There's... The only problem with the Japanese butt washy things is that if you don't speak Japanese extremely well, then you are at risk of pushing the wrong button <laughs> and having something terrible happen down there. <laughs> no, not the probing! Turn off the probing! Yeah, you do not want to hit the colonoscopy button. Yeah, no. But they do blow dry you when you're done, which is a nice touch. <laughs> that you dry, give you a little <laughs> This little kiss hand comes out and dries it off. <laughs> give you a little kiss. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. And you may not know this, but we actually have a private Facebook group where we strategize with our viewers about future content. We talk about British culture and all of that goodness. So if you want to get in on that, go on over and join our Patreon. Link in the description below.
Also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the like button on this video because those are the two most powerful things you can do to help us grow our community. We will see you guys next time. Bisous!